Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism More All Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program. We are in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 because that is where I do shuttle things. And I am here to ask the question, can we get the shuttle to the moon? At least on a lunar flyby, hopefully into lunar orbit and back, but that's a whole other business. And I'll just warn you ahead of time, in this video I'm not gonna achieve it, okay? Spoilers. This is just coming up with ideas. Uh, to try and get it closer to the goal, but it's a tough process and so this is a process video. And you can see the situation here, we've got a very hefty stack, very hefty stack, and I had certain criteria, certain limitations. I couldn't change the shuttle stack, that's a rule. So the shuttle has to stay the same with its uh, OMS engines and everything, the external tank has to stay the same, and the SRBs stay the same. So no touching those, no liquid boosters, no turning it into Baran or anything, okay? So, um, but I could put something in the cargo bay, that's allowed. Now, given that, we have a lot of work to do. And in this case, I've put two F1 engines in uh, on a tank at the bottom of the external tank. And then they're also feeding from those tanks on the opposite side of the shuttle. On the shuttle side, the two new tanks over its wings are the transfer stage for the moon. They're supposed to get us over to the moon. And on them are RL-60 engines, which are basically advanced RL-10 engines. Though I could have put RL-10B2s on there and it wouldn't have changed anything significantly. So you can just think of them as RL-10B2s. We're not going to use any special feature of the RL-60s anyway. So, here we go. I'm letting go of those tanks that have been feeding the F1 engines. And now the F1 engines are just feeding from the tank at the bottom of the external tank there. Keeping in mind that kerosene and oxygen is denser than the hydrogen and oxygen that the shuttle engines feed off of. So, that little tank that the F1s were using still provides a fair amount of burn time. But of course, there is a problem here. And that's due to the fact that we've got all this extra mass on the shuttle side and not on the external tank side. And so the shuttle engines, which are tilted to point through the combined shuttle external tank center of mass, are not pointed right anymore. Basically, they need to be flatter than they are now. And yeah, that means that they're pointed below the center mass, which net net pushes everything towards the shuttle side and starts this roll or pitch whatever you want to go with you know what I mean and that's a problem so we need to fix that if we want to get to orbit and I try to let go of the external tank when we've got too much of a um, rotation going on and that's what happens thankfully we are just testing but even if we had survived, we didn't have enough Delta V, we were nowhere close to orbit. And so I decided that we needed to make these tanks on the opposite side of the shuttle bigger, which means we had to put engines on them because there wasn't enough thrust to carry them otherwise. And so I put E1 engines, which were a proposed engine uh, in the 1960s. They have the same ISP as the F1 engines, but they have 2,000 kilonewtons of thrust, so much less thrust, but they're lighter. Uh, they are very high thrust to weight ratio engines, very efficient in that respect, not efficient in the ISP respect. So that's why I picked them, though possibly using Merlin engines would be a better idea, but I was sort of, no, I'm not really keeping, uh, sort of keeping it 1960s, 70s ish right now. The RL10. RL-60s aren't, but then I could have put RL-10s there, so it'd be fine. Anyway, so I let go of the F1 engines first. And you can see me modifying my staging for that. So off go the F1 engines. Uh, the little fair I should have just made that one fairing so it didn't like threaten everything. But yeah, or just not have that fairing to couple at all. Anyway, so here we do the roll, and you can see the E1's still going. Of course, uh, in, in desperation, we could use Soviet engines, and those would be more efficient, too. You can see that we still have the same imbalance problem. In this case, the E1 engines are making it worse because they're pushing from the opposite side. So, yeah. That ended up, uh, we need to tilt those E1 engines a little bit. 
basically in the opposite way that the shuttle's engines are tilted. But yeah, the shuttle wasn't able to uh, regain control, and in any case, we still didn't have enough Delta V. So, I changed everything to balloon tanks. Uh, so, we had been using default tanks, we we're going to go to balloon tanks. And we're gonna see whether that gives us enough. I tilted the E1 engines now. Just a little bit. But uh, that might not be enough. It might be better to keep the F1 engines on, but then they're heavy, right? Yeah, it's getting iffy on liftoff too. Gotta watch out for that. It's definitely not the most efficient liftoff ever. Now, of course, the reason I'm doing all this testing is because MechJev is inadequate as far as dealing with such a complicated system like this. So, its Delta V readings aren't telling me what I need to know. The only way I'm gonna know whether I have enough or not is by launching it. And to be honest, I didn't realize how difficult it was gonna be. I went, okay, well, we're gonna put some F1 engines on, that get some extra fuel, and we could make it work, maybe. If we have sufficiently efficient transfer engines, which the RL-10s or RL-60s would be, right? They're about as good as you're gonna get uh, in the 1960s and 70s, at least. So, yeah. But it turned out a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. This is all done during a live stream, of course. You can see the tilt on the F1 engines there, but it's still not working for me. And I shut them down, decouple them. I should action group that, but things are changing so quickly that uh, we're gonna have all sorts of modifications anyway, and things will inevitably not be action grouped. So we get a little bit further, but not far enough. And again, the mass on the shuttle side causes this rotation. But this time, I stop it before it gets totally out of whack so that the shuttle's RCS can stabilize and we let go of the external tank. Now, I light the RL-60s. And they get us to orbit, but you can see we only have a thousand meters per second in this stage left. Now, we still have some extra with the shuttle's OMS, and I have an extra OMS... I, I forget if I kept the OMS tank inside the shuttle on that launch. But we had about 2,000 total, but we need 3,100 for a flyby. So we're a thousand short even if we use the shuttle's OMS as well. But uh, here I decided to put the E1 engines on the bottom instead of the F1 engines for two reasons. First, I realized that the fuel mixture they're using is different than the one the F1 engines are using and that was complicating matters, giving us an excess of, I think, uh, the oxygen. But I'm not sure. But this way we're using the same fuel mixture. And second, uh, they have a better thrust to weight ratio than the F1 engines, so they're lighter for the same amount of thrust. And actually this is providing more thrust, I think. Nine of those uh, E1 engines uh, should provide more thrust than even two F1As. So that was also a consideration. Now, if we uh, break away from the Made in USA model of this, of course we can use the Soviet engines. And if we break away from the Armageddon time limit, if you will, uh, we could use Raptor engines, or BE-4 engines, both of which would be better than the kerosene oxygen engines we're using now. So there are options for making this more efficient. I am aware of that, you don't have to tell me all the engine options, I know them. <laughs> um, but I was trying to see what I could get away with, and uh, even on this uh, launch, this is not enough. So I will work my way through some of the other options, but I am sticking to the no changing the shell stack because that's more of a challenge. Obviously, Buran would be lighter and easier, but uh, obviously, if you're trying to send the shuttle to the moon, you're not looking for easy, right? I mean, if we wanted to be easy, we'd just launch Apollo and be done with it. Uh, so this is meant to be a difficult endeavor. The question is, how little can we do to make it work? That's basically the trick. How little can we do to make it work? So here again we have the RL-60s ignited, which obviously I did not want to do because they're the transfer stage, and we need to let go of the external tank here. I've transferred some of the external tank fuel into 
the RL10 stage, or RL60 stage. If we could have crossfeeding like that, that would probably help, but I'd have to figure out exactly the right timing of when to light the RL60s to feed off of the external tank and all that business. But yeah, we could set fuel prioritization to make sure that happens properly. Okay, just trying to stabilize before laying go of this. So basically right now I'm working my way through sort of a list of things I wanted to try. Uh, that I basically wanted to try before KSB2 came out. And this seemed like an opportune time to do that. And this is just one of those things. But it needs a little bit more work. As we reach orbit here, we can see that with the OMS fuel, we have about 2,800 or so, which is about 300 meters per second short, but that's cutting a little bit close. So I'll look into the other options, and you can tune in for those adventures. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.